the sun, surf, and sand, what the shore is famous for. There is no more desirable place for millions of people to live and work, and so millions do. There is another element which adds to life along the coastline. It is the life that lies just offshore and down below. The world's coastlines were densely populated long before there were people. For here lie the reefs and seagrass beds in which fish and other marine life flourish. These habitats provide an underwater oasis on an otherwise barren bottom. Without these gardens of the deep, our marine life would perish, and with it, human activities that pumped billions of dollars into the world's coastal economies, not to mention those that helped feed us. But ironically, we are destroying these environmental assets in an effort to restore another sand. It's called beach renourishment, a peaceful sounding name for a powerful process. In fact, it is a form of mining. Basically, sand is dredged from one place where it presumably is not needed and pumped out where it is. It is an operation that is traumatic to the environment at both places. At the Barrow site, anything living on or in the bottom is obliterated by the dredging and surrounding waters are defiled by the accompanying silt and turbidity. At the renourishment site, anything alive on the bottom is buried alive. Out of the past, renourishment projects pose a danger to that too. For instance, at the mouth of Florida's Tampa Bay, a borrow site has been a long sandbar that parallels the north side of the main ship channel. The removal of the sand created a Venturi effect increasing the flow of current past an island called Egmont Key, which lies just south of the channel. As a consequence, erosion of the island has increased dramatically. Now it's history. Fortifications predating the turn of the last century are falling into the sea. Environmentally, economically, and historically, beach renourishment by means of dredge and fill has many flaws. But what choice have we? If we stop rebuilding beaches, entire coastal communities, along with their economies, will fall into the sea. And so beach renourishment continues to be the accepted technology. Ironically, it needn't be. Ironically, because there is an alternative technology that allows beaches to rebuild themselves, and it's been around for years. Called undercurrent stabilization, it is a system developed by Dick Holmberg, a natural earth scientist. Holmberg began studying the problem as a young man while working as a commercial diver. Underwater, he observed the effect of currents firsthand. As his understanding grew, he came to realize the futility of dredge and fill as a solution for our disappearing sand. And so Holmberg became an underwater inventor and entrepreneur. The result, his undercurrent stabilizers a technology that not only arrests, but reverses beach erosion. Studying the forces that cause it, he had found a way to reverse it. He recognized that beach erosion occurs when a current encounters a shoreline with enough energy to lift sand and carry it away. Where harbors and dredged channels exist, the problem is exacerbated, for here, gravity is at work. Sand literally falls into these deeper spaces to be carried out to sea with the tide. Furthermore, associated jetties and other structures obstruct the natural flow of sand along the coastline. Little can be done to reverse this phenomenon as harbors and channels are essential to commerce. But Holmberg found he could diminish it while completely reversing erosion elsewhere along the shore. He devised a system that simply slows down the current. It can be best likened to speed bumps. Slow, the current not only has not the energy to pick up sand, it also drops the sand it is already carrying. The result, the beach builds up. This is not theory, it is fact. Fact that, where Holmberg has been allowed to implement his technology, it has been proven time and again and over a period of time of as much as 30 years. Coverage such as this did more than alert victims of erosion to Holmberg's solution. It also got the attention of his chief competition, the dredge industry. 
For the dredge industry, beach-free nourishment is like a multi-billion dollar annuity. But it can count on this perpetual source of profit only so long as the public is willing to pay for its temporary fixes. And even then, how much is the public paying? In the past, corruption in the dredge industry has been rampant. Reeling from the sting of past prosecutions and threatened by a technology that makes theirs obsolete, the dredge industry has conducted an intense lobbying effort against Holmberg's system. Then there is the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which works very closely with the dredge industry. Today, pulling a permit from them for Holmberg installations is like pulling teeth. They find all kinds of excuses for not approving Holmberg's system. It does help the problem, but it does not eliminate the natural phenomenon of erosion on a, on a, on a lake-wide basis. But dredge projects do. And if you want to eliminate the problem on a lake-wide basis, why not install Holmberg's system on a lake-wide basis? His system costs about the same, but unlike dredge projects, only has to be done once. In my opinion, the coastal management is, that's an oxymoron, it's not managed. For his Holmberg system, Dr. Paul Keck had to wage a long and expensive battle with the bureaucrats. They're not keeping up with technology. They're not allowing the permitting of structures which are far superior to what they're continuing to permit. It was very obvious to everybody, and my neighbors included, that you know, the systems were extremely beneficial. I like them because they're not something that you're gonna, the kids are going to cut themselves on. We're not talking about wood and slivers and bolts and tires and rocks and garbage that pollute and injure. We're talking about systems that are, in my opinion, far superior to anything else that's out there right now. And there's absolutely no reason why anybody should have to go through what we went through to have these structures installed. Dick Holmberg's system has now been installed in over 200 locations around the country, and at each, you'll find residents who are delighted, but bitter. Delighted because they have their beach back. Bitter because of the bureaucratic gauntlet they had to run to get it. Hydrologist David Schultz doesn't get it. I've uh, been working, uh, studying Holmberg systems for a number of years now, and I've seen uh, a lot of positive results from what he's done. Certainly, I, I've seen enough positive results not to understand why the regulatory uh, authorities are so dead set against him. It seems to me as though they are uh, looking at it from above and saying they are groins because they follow the same plan view as groins. Yet, if you look at them in cross-section, they're different. If you look at the materials that are used, they're different. And most importantly, if you look at the results, they're different. And I really believe that these structures have to be defined separately in and of themselves in order to be able to do them justice and to have them treated fairly in the regulatory climate we have today. Fortunately, resistance to new technology and acquiescence to the dredge lobby is not manifest throughout the world. Other countries, in most cases younger countries, with less entrenched bureaucracies, like younger people, are more open to new ideas, new technologies. In Saudi Arabia, for instance, it is a Holmberg system that has gone in to restore and preserve an entire coastal community's beach and coastal lifestyle. And let us not forget that it is not only the people who benefit. The preservation of a natural shoreline benefits not only those who live above it, but those who soar above it, scurry along it, and those who live below it. Is your community destined to spend millions of dollars storm after storm, year after year, generation after generation? That is the legacy of the dredge industry's temporary technology. Or is your community going to invest just once for a beach in perpetuity?